In the last section, we were able to identify data that was relevant to the problem we were trying to solve. Remember, we had said that we want to somehow record our drop position, our ball bounciness, ball size, and the bucket that a ball lands in. So now it's up to us to somehow assemble a set of data related to the problem that we're trying to solve. So essentially, we want to click around a whole bunch on this diagram and record a bunch of distinct data points. We want to record where we dropped the ball from, how bouncy the ball was at that point in time, the ball size at that point in time, and which bucket it eventually fell into. Now, before we start to worry too much about exactly how we're going to record this information, I want to talk to you a little bit about how we generally store data sets in the world of JavaScript, because again, that's what we're going to be using as our language of choice throughout this entire course. Now, in the world of JavaScript, for maintaining data sets, there's really two distinct approaches that we can take. The first is to record all these different ball drops or all these different observations, as we might call them, inside of a single array. And inside that single array, we might have a single object. And this single object would record information about that single ball drop attempt. So in this case, I have a four array of four different records. That means that I dropped a ball four different times. The first time, I dropped the ball at position 300. So again, we can use the drop position up here at the top right-hand side. So 300 would be like just about there. And then my ball bounciness was 0.4. My ball size was 16, and it landed in bucket number four. Now, this is one approach that we can use to record and store data in the world of JavaScript. But we're going to use a slightly different approach, one that ends up being a lot easier to make use of, if a little bit more confusing when you first get used to it. All right, so here's the approach that we're going to use for storing data inside of all of our applications that we're going to be working on throughout this course. We're going to store all of our data inside an array of arrays. So inside of a large outer array, we're going to have a bunch of different inner arrays. And each of these different inner arrays is going to represent one single ball drop. Inside this array, we record the drop position, the bounciness, the ball size, and the bucket. So in other words, the index of every value that is stored inside these inner arrays is very meaningful, even though they're not necessarily labeled as such. In this approach, we kind of have to keep it in our minds or kind of in our heads that the first index in each of these inner arrays is the drop position, and then the next one is bounciness, the next one is ball size, and the final one is bucket, or which bucket the ball fell into. And so we need to make sure that we stay very, very, very much aware of what the individual indices inside of these inner arrays mean to us. Now, like I said, when you first get started with this approach of storing data, initially it's a little bit challenging, but later on inside this course, when we start making use of some other libraries, you're going to see that there is a very, very good reason that we take this type of approach right here. And it really ultimately makes life a lot more straightforward than it otherwise might be. Okay, so with that in mind, the next thing we have to do is figure out how we can somehow record information from each of these ball dropped attempts. Well, for that, we get to write some code, finally. So it's been a couple of videos into this course. We haven't written any code just yet, so I'm really happy we now get to write a little bit of code. We're going to write a little bit of code into this application that is going to somehow track every single ball drop and record the drop position, the bounciness, the size, and which bucket it falls into. So to get started with this process, we're going to first open up our code editor based upon the project directory that we had just downloaded onto our local machine. And so back inside of my terminal, I'm at that same Plinko directory. This is a folder that we created a couple sections ago. And inside of here is the index.html file, a lib folder, and a score.js file. I'm going to open up my code editor inside this directory. Now notice that I'm running code dot right here. I am able to run this command because I've set up Visual Studio Code to respond to this command inside of my terminal. If you have not done the same, you will not be able to run this command. At any rate, all you need to do at this point is open up your code editor of choice based upon this Plinko directory. Okay, here we go. So again, I'm inside the Plinko folder. I see the lib directory, index.html, and score.js. Let's open up that score.js file. Now inside of here, you're gonna see that there are two functions that have already been defined. The first function is called onScoreUpdate. This is a function that I created, I wired up this application for us to use. Anytime that a ball falls into a bucket, on score update will be called with the drop position of the ball, its bounciness, its size, 
and the label of the bucket that it fell into. So is it bucket one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, eight, nine, ten, all these different buckets down here. So again, every single time a ball falls into a bucket, this function gets called. You'll also notice there's a second function inside of here called run analysis. We're going to add a lot of code to this run analysis function eventually. All you need to know right now is that if you click the analyze button down here, that run analysis function will be automatically called. So again, I did just a little bit of pre-setup for us just to get us started. Let's take a quick pause right here. When we come back to the next section, we're going to write some code into onScoreUpdate and make sure that every single time a ball falls into a bucket, we record some information about that ball. So quick pause, and I'll see you in just a minute.